Today we're going to bring in a new laptop. It's a Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme Generation 4. We're going to take a look at it and we're going to see what's under the hood. First of all, it comes with an NVIDIA RTX A5000 laptop GPU. Now, including its Intel 11th generation, it's at 2.6 hertz, all right, 60 hertz, that's what it is. Now, it does have 32 gigs. It comes with one terabyte NVMe and M.2. We're going to take a look at it too and see what you can upgrade on the system. So first of all, I just want to talk about the actual keyboard itself. The actual keyboard, it does has not changed in the ThinkPad too much, I mean, throughout the years. The only thing I've seen the upgrades on a couple of things is that you have the fingerprint reader on the actual power button, which now came out a while back too, and now everybody adopted. Now, the different features that this system has, it looks more like a surface. It's thin as a surface, uh, just the actual monitor itself, but the actual casing itself, the actual keyboard part of it, it's a little thicker. Now, it does have the vents in the back and it does throw out a lot of heat when you're working on a lot of these applications. If you guys notice, the, the actual speakers are pretty, they're right in the front. They're real strong, real powerful. If you're gonna be gaming on the system, it's really good quality for gaming. If you're gonna be working three-dimensional programs or any auto desk, it's actually a really good system. Now, you're not gonna get a functions of a desktop, but you're, it's capable of handling those applications. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what, I, what you get when you get something like this. So first of all, you get all the function keys up here, and with the function keys, you could change certain things. You could turn off the mic, you could turn off the audio, you could you actually control the actual monitors if you want to replace. If you have multiple screens, you could control that through here. You could do the airport mode. You can pretty much control all these functions with the pictures that show you on the top. Where the actual F1 keys used to be, the F1s actually transfer into the function keys. Now, you have a couple other items in here, and you still have that red mark, the red little mouse in here that they include. It's their trademark pretty much for many years. When they, this used to be, when ThinkPad used to be IBM, it was always there too. So it hasn't gone away. They continue to keep the same traditional um, setup. All right, first of all, about the ThinkPad. One thing I don't like about this, if you guys can see, it, it, it gets all the fingerprints. No matter how much oil you have in your hand or any oil, it still gets all the fingerprints. That's one thing I don't like about the actual black color, black color that they have in here. But pretty much it's it's a well-built system. It's sturdy. Uh, it's not made for feel operation, to be honest with you, because it's very fragile too. It's not one of those systems that you drop and it'll hold its structure. You might damage it too. So we're gonna take a look at some of the features. We're gonna go under the hood and see what I think about it and what you can upgrade. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's take a look at the side panel. Here we're gonna have on our SD card reader. We have two USBs. 3.1s if you can see and then we have a lock system and of course you have the power button right next to it look at the other side you have a 3.1 jack you got a UHDMI and then we have two uh, type C's in here two USBs and then the power adapter right now we're charging it so you'll see an indication of light coming in take a look at the actual camera see so you have two microphones right next to each other here and then you got your actual camera with the shutter okay now let you guys know if you guys notice we're gonna close the shutter out and it turns red automatically that tells you that you know they're not gonna be able to see you pretty much blocking out the actual pinhole of the actual camera and if you want to turn it on just open it up like that. So this is gonna be a manual thing to do. This is the camera, we're gonna test it out now. Camera that's built in the actual system. And you guys know the cameras are not the best on the laptop, so if you want good quality, it's not best to use this one for any kind of high definition. This is only good for any kind of Zoom meetings or any kind of other meetings you're gonna attend to, even Microsoft meetings and Teams and stuff like that. But this is not for if you want to display something or maybe teach somebody and write something on the board. You're not going to be able to see very good. If you guys notice, I don't have that much light in the back. I do have a fan in one single light. But just to let you guys know, just to see how it works. So I hope you guys enjoy this part of the portion of the all right let's look at what all the heat and this is the same kind of heat that's coming out it's 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 actually extremely hot in that area we're talking about almost 120 degrees coming out on this area in particular area it's just extremely hot and this is just the top of it so in the future if you run projects just like uh, what i was doing right now you're gonna have functions issues functioning with the actual keyboard because it is extremely hot to a touch um i wouldn't recommend you working on the actual keyboards itself. You're gonna need an external keyboard because this is, 
is actually emitting a lot of heat throughout the whole system especially on these areas if you can see the hot spot and look at my hands not even as hot as the actual system itself and right now it's because i'm running on a high-end application lumium lumium 12 and it's not capable of handling this application very well uh you can see the suction of the air is underneath of it of course and then you can see the blue spots that's where it's bringing all the air in and it's in the intakes and then it's taking and it's pushing all the air through the back all the air is coming out right behind the actual monitor uh, don't be surprised in the future maybe you're gonna get monk, uh, monk functions on the actual monitor too itself so that's another thing that i would kind of like keep an eye on that part it's slimmed down but it has a it sounds like it has a good video card, but in reality, you're not going to get a good quality video card, even though it has a name in front of it, the A5000. So it's not really capable of running at that speed. But you guys notice, if you can't even keep up with an application as simple as this, I don't really recommend you guys to work any kind of AutoCAD or any kind of application, three-dimensional application. It's good for Adobe. It's good for maybe some video editing, but this is a problem that you're going to run in the future. It's going to heat up a lot. If it runs a lot, if your engine's running a lot of the GPU, this is going to happen to keeping it cool. All right, you guys can hear it. It's pretty loud when I'm trying to install an action on it. It's not that... I thought it was going to be quieter, but... You can hear some of it. All right, we're gonna test out the surround sound on the actual speakers of the system, see how well they work and see if they actually identifies left to right. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna do Lumium. We're gonna test it out with a software called Lumium. And this is a very powerful system that it requires a lot of GPU. As you can see, the GPU, like I said, is an NVIDIA RTX A5000 laptop version. Now, compared to other systems, um, I would've got higher GPU if it's an RTX, maybe a, maybe a 3080, RTX. Well, but the the laptop GPUs are not exactly what they're meant to be. They actually slim down their version of the older of the actual card itself. So if you guys can see, we do have 16 uh, gigs of graphic memory, processing speed 2.60 hertz. All right, and then uh, we got the system 32 up to 32 gigs. Recommendation: We're just in the mark right here. It's recommended to go to 64 if you want to run this application really good. The marks, if you guys can see, we have plenty of room for these two. We just made it through the graphic card on this system. So this system is supposed to be made for graphics. But as you can see, it's just hanging there by a thread. This is Lumium 12, just to let you guys know. We're going to take a look at it. And just to see how good of the quality that is. So let's go ahead and take a look at the water effects. And we'll see how the engine works in here with it. And if you can see it, you can actually see it breaking apart. But to some people, it might be normal. I mean, but those that work in the graphic industry, you can tell that it's not normal. And let's go, go to the ocean to see more of the actual quality here. And the oceans are breaking apart. The ocean, if you guys can see it, it's breaking apart right here. Um, you can see the engine struggling. I could hear the engine struggling. Uh, this is the percentage that we're getting. Uh, we're at 73% and this is the quality that we're getting. So we're going to go underwater to see if we could do that. You can see the quality of it. And let's see if we could sail to uh, a sailboat. And I can feel the heat coming out. And we're just about to get to the boat when I can feel it struggling. So let's go into the boat and see if we can see the inside of the boat. There's nothing here. We're going to go to sail this rich guy here. <laughs> you know, one day it should be me up there. Uh, so pretty much you can see the land hole is far away um, For objects there if you're playing games You're you're gonna struggle a little bit. This could run a lot of multiple games good games in the in, in mostly every game That's uh, out there. It could run. It's an RTX card. They could run but um, This will be running more like a RTX 3070 video card to be honest with you it's not going to be a 3080 rtx card it's not as capable as strong as it's more like a 3070 video card quality 
all right now that it's a little it was a little difficult opening it up but it was possible i got a little credit card i started from the actual back where the actual vents are and you just push your way up now you don't remove the actual screws if you guys notice don't remove the screws they stay on the actual system itself so right now as you notice you get one memory chip it's covered up it's here for the heat shields if you guys can see that it has one memory it's 32 gigs built in and not built in it comes with it included right or you could get cheaper versions of 16 gigs depends on on the actual your budget now you could also include another uh, 32 to make it up to 64 on max on this system 64 gigs of memory is the max on the system itself now you get the intakes where all your fans are going to be sucking all the air in and they're blowing them out through the back of course they go right behind the actual monitor itself now one thing i noticed in here the very simple things that you can upgrade would be the battery so if you start getting you know batteries draining out too quick it's not working or maybe uh, it, it's bulging too much or something's happening you could replace the battery it's very simple there's a couple of screws you you got to remove it and there's instructions in here they actually tell you where all the screws are set up so you just follow those remove the actual cable disconnect it from here in the back once you disconnect it it's pretty much simple to replace the battery itself now another thing that you i've noticed that it doesn't have a second slot for an m.2 m.2 right here is the original one the nvn it's it's here it's covered up with the actual copper base because this system if you guys notice it has a lot of plastic covering a lot of components because it does get a lot it gets super hot so where it you have your intel and your C, uh, your intel and your gpu uh being covered by the system in here they they reside here one's here and the other one's right next to it but it's still going to overheat in the future you might have to want to replace the actual thermal pacing and that's a little difficult thing for especially a machine this of this quality it's gonna be a little difficult to replace that part i mean you're gonna have to remove it and they do give you instructions how to remove the actual uh whole setup and but sometimes it's elaborate you're gonna actually um, void your warranty if you do that but after a couple of years you're not gonna have any warranty so i would say go ahead and do that i have to replace the thermal place on some of these systems uh fortunately they it, that's the first thing that always goes the thermal it's cheap thermal paste they put in there it doesn't last long and when when you guys see the heat that was overheating too much you're gonna run into issues where it's just gonna shut off itself because of the it has a temperature control system now this is, does not have a sim card so you're not gonna be able to put any wireless uh, um, sim card or anything like that now they do have components for this if you want to put an ethernet uh, a category 5 cable connection to it they do have converters for it and they do sell them multiple converters to, to uh, use this system if you don't have enough actually um, connections to so um, it does have the wireless if you guys notice the wireless is built in here and the wires extended throughout the whole system so you could get good quality um, 5.2 Hertz on the actual system uh, I would balance it out to 2.4 to 5 Hertz so you could get a good reading on the actual uh, wireless device depends on your wall too so five hertz is pretty much a standard in the industry right now but there's actually higher for um uh there's actually higher frequency and now available but that's for another talk show we could do some other stuff so um not that much if you ever lock yourself off your your bios you can always they do still include the battery so it's easy to remove the battery wait a couple of minutes uh put it back in there the system will automatically forget the system you're gonna have to default a lot of the, the settings itself you're gonna have to teach the system of the, about your m.2 about how to start the os and boot ups and all that stuff so that's the only thing you have to worry about the only thing you can upgrade is add an extra memory you go upgrade the m.2 so something higher right now it's one terabyte you go upgrade it to two terabytes three terabytes whatever you could, your price can afford and then you go replace the battery very simple so overall after testing this machine and doing all the the functions and all that running all the tests um, my advice if you're gonna go into gaming or if you're gonna go into three-dimensional applications uh, I would recommend you skip this machine and get something a little bit more more kick on it because it struggled it overheat they thin it down so much that uh, not enough airs uh, 
being circulate properly in here and it does get a little hot uh, in the future you're going to run issues with your keyboard overheating it's going to burn out some of the functions in there uh, thermal paste is going to be one that you're going to have issues in the future some of the functions are going to stop working it could be either memory chip because it's close to the C cpu and gpu and also your m.2 everything's brought close together and i don't think a lot of heat is being distributed properly even though they have all these covers just for that you're still going to have run into issues in the future if you're going to run of these uh, application or you're going to be gaming so my recommendation if you have once if you're going to do these kind of functions get something else instead of this so great system for if you're going to travel it's lightweight very simple easy to take with you if you're a photographer or you're using adobe this is a good system video editing you're going to struggle just a little bit here but it's actually a good system for that too so if you're looking for a student's computer majoring in graphic design or three-dimensional applications this is something they could use as a semi-entry level so i hope you guys enjoy the video